Hello, my name is Kimberly Olson. I'm the creator of FitKim.com. I'm also the author of The Fit Kim Lifestyle. I have two PhDs in natural health and holistic nutrition. I'm a personal trainer and also a mom. And today I have a special guest. This is Pilar, and she is a health and wellness expert, and she's also a cancer survivor. And we have a special treat for you today because we're going to get an opportunity to talk to her, ask her some questions, and just hear her story. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Kim, for having me. Yes, and thank you for the green juice. <laughs> So just to start, tell me a little bit about your background as far as what got you into a healthy lifestyle. Okay, well I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2010 and I did what everybody else does, had surgery, uh, chemo wouldn't work, so I went all my life doing the same things as usual, eating a semi-balanced diet, eating um, sweets, uh, drinking, you know. But 2012, I came back, I made a few changes, but it was until last year, May 2014, that I was diagnosed with metastasis everywhere, colon, liver, and other organs, and that's when I snapped and I said, I need to do big changes here. So I started doing research 24-7 on how to heal my body. Okay. And experimenting with different therapies, I came up with a protocol called Detox, Nourish, Energize. Detox, Nourish, nourish Energize. energize. Okay. So detox my body, nourish my body, and then add some type of electromagnetic uh, field therapy. Okay. And so what does it mean when you say metastasize? Because, you know, everyone listening might not have experience with cancer. Probably known somebody who's had it or, you know, lost a loved one, but what does that mean? Metastasize is when it spreads to other organs, so from when it started to mm -hmm. other organs. Also, 90%, I believe, of people that don't survive cancer uh, die from metastasis. Okay. So it's very dangerous. Yes. That is, it's terminal. Okay. And so when you actually, you know, you said this was the third occurrence last mm -hmm. May, and you went in and you had this diagnosis, what was the, the, rec the conventional recommendation for you, or what did they tell you? Well, to start with, I want to say this, sometimes there's no symptoms. That's okay. what's really scary, that when, with cancer, there's no symptoms most of the time until it's too late. Okay. So I went to the emergency room with severe pain. It was the second time I went there. The first time they said, oh, it could be anything else, go to your gastro. Oh, wow. And they sent me home. Oh. Four months later, I'm there with severe pain. I'm telling you the most horrible pain you can imagine. And they did a CAT scan, and it showed everywhere. They said, you might still have time, go to see your oncologist. You and might have time. You might still have oh time. Goodness. And I remember crying and then saying, no, I gotta do something about this. So they got a counselor, we talked, and next week I go to my oncologist and he said, well, it's a very rare tumor, okay. and tumors, and chemo's not gonna work. Let's go see a surgeon. I go to an oncologist surgeon, okay. and he said, if I, uh, um, cut this tumor that's in the colon. Okay. It's not gonna guarantee that you live longer. Oh, that's I said, nice. We gotta, <laughs> that's not very nice. Right? I said, we gotta just oh, say it like it is. He said the two tumors in the liver, one on seven uh, centimeters and the other one four, oh, wow. are big. And then there's some in the stomach wall and there's in the vaginal wall. And there's really not much we can do. Okay. We want to give you good quality of life, and you have to be more aggressive with your treatment. That's okay. What they said. So at that moment, it sounds like you kind of made that decision that, you know, they were doing the best that they can. If you all don't know, conventional doctors only have a few options. Um, I experienced that with my mom two years ago, and the, they recommended for her surgery, chemo and radiation for breast cancer. And um, that was it. And so I did a lot of research like you did, and we actually came up with an alternative protocol. And she had to follow this regimen, which was really strict. But she also had to change her diet, and she did, and she completely healed from it without the chemo and radiation. My point is, her doctor wasn't able to give her anything other than that. So at that moment, you'd already gone through that. So at that moment, did you say, you know, enough is enough. I want, I want to see what my other options are. Is that kind of how it went for you? Yes, I was in a lot of pain, so I went back home with my parents. I was resting, taking painkillers. And I started reading a lot, and I came across Chris Beat Cancer. What is it called? Chris Beat Cancer. Okay. He survived colon cancer on just diet. Okay. And then I came across another doctor, Lynn Connelly. Mm -hmm. She's in Irvine, California. Okay. And I said, that's what I have to go see. 
she's an alternative. So I started GoFundMe and I went to see her. But wow. staying, going to her clinic and not staying there, because if you stay there, you have to go to Mexico. Okay. Uh, it's about at least $2,000 a day oh, and wow. up. Oh, wow. But still being there, they experiment with you. They give you vitamin C, they give you oxygen therapy, PMF, they do all these different experiments. You end up leaving there, paying $3,000, and you're still in the same place. Okay. So I went there for three days. Okay. I learned about all the therapies. What's great about this clinic is that it's called Oasis of Hope. Oasis of Hope. Is that she goes all over the world finding therapies that cure or heal cancer or give you a better quality of life that work, that there's scientific scientific research behind it. Uh, so that's what she does. Really there's powerful. so many things. Yeah. So going home, I said, how am I going to survive this? How am I going to do this? I mean, you, you can't you, even imagine. Yeah. That must have been really like, How am I going to pay for it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's when I came up with the protocol. So did you kind of take pieces of what you, that's what I had done with my mom. So you took pieces and kind of said that makes sense to me or based on what type of cancer I have and you kind of pieced it together. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that was back last summer. That summer, I really, really started this protocol in November. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you were there doing that research and then tell me what happened when you went in for your checkups. Um, to kind of see how your body was responding. That's a great part. That's a great part. And my results are on my website. They're everywhere. Okay. And we'll, I'll post her website. What is your website name? Healthybeautybypilar.com. Okay. And, and I'll post that for everybody. And you can follow my journey. But I put, and I was a very private person before now, and I want to help others. I want them to see the before and afters. Within three months, they shrank very little. But when I started this protocol, they shrank 60%. This is in March. So oh, we'll see wow. June 10th with my next oh, uh, MRI. Okay. And it is crazy how I saw them shrink from 3.8 centimeters to 14 millimeters. Oh, wow. And that was just to me a miracle. And, and, you, and you didn't do any chemo, radiation? No. no. So what exactly did you do? I mean, as far as you don't have to share your whole protocol, but what are some life, you know, lifestyle changes? And I have some this, by the way. Some cheers. cheers. <laughs> to life. I know. Mm -hmm. To life, green living, oxygen, what, um, as far as like your nutrition and exercise, just even just, um, what I've heard about you, great things is that you learn how to also change the way you think about things. You know, you seem very calm and centered and laid back and all of you know, I have a lot of energy, so I need to learn from Pilar. <laughs> but what, what are some of the things that you did that you think people listening could start doing right away? I'll tell you this, a year ago, I was not calm like this. I wanted to die. I was always crying very upset yeah but one the key is detox your life your that life is the key. I love that that is the key and I learned I learned that in a year detox your life detox your life and that is number one okay that's where you start and detox from toxins okay and I recommend if you have cancer or your an illness to do coffee enemas, colonics. Mm -hmm. I recommend having green juices at least three a day. At okay. least. And then about this size? Mm -hmm. eight, okay. eight, 12 ounces. Okay. I was doing 10, now I'm doing five a okay. day. That is the detoxing part. But also heal your soul. Oh, the pain in your heart, forgive, uh, let go of the pain. Because it doesn't have to be called resentment or anger, it, it's just pain. Yeah. And you gotta let go. Meditate and just forgive and have a mantra yeah. every day. Something that you can live by. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you've heard of um, Chris Carr. Yes, Crazy yes sexy. of course. I'm a huge <laughs> fan, but um, it's, it's just interesting because um, I've had a lot of cancer in my family and just close uh, to, to home. And um, I love that book because although it's just like you, although you are a cancer survivor and Chris Carr is a cancer survivor. She shares what worked for her, but anybody can do it. And you know? same thing here. And mm -hmm. she's all about the juices and the enemas and all of the things that you're saying. And I think it's important that we realize that we don't have to have that diagnosis to be motivated to make the change. Number one, because you just never know. And like she said, there aren't symptoms. But number two, how do you feel now? I feel great. I feel I'm going to be 45. I oh, can believe I'm saying it. Wonderful. And in my 20s, I did not feel this way. <laughs> All the aches and pains are gone. Oh, I feel great. That's and awesome. I'm not even 100% there cured. 
but I would be. I know that you have to be positive too. Right. And you do have to be positive. And I think um, that's what's really sticking with me is sometimes I have a lot of type A moms and they are just, they're doing the green juice, they're going to Whole Foods, they're buying organic, they're shipping the kids off here and there and there, and they're doing all the right things, but they're still, and I, I admit this is something I would say the one thing that I really need to always be improving on is they're still, you know, more that type A, just that driver and, and go, 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 go. And then they get sick and they don't know why, you know, they're eating and they're working out all the time. But I think the missing piece is, it is mind, body, soul. And I think you really have to be able to just come in word and meditate. And meditation can literally be five minutes in the morning. Just if you think there's no way you can lock yourself in the bathroom for five minutes yeah. and get that meditation at night. air at night. That's when I do it. Yeah. I have two dollars, a single mall of $2. Oh. And they be with me, they're with me, no. yeah, so I go at night. See, you're amazing. And how old are your girls? 13 and 8. Okay, yes. so 13 and 8. And that's a great, great thing to point out is that when you think about making these lifestyle changes, the number one objectives I hear are I don't have enough time and I don't have enough money. And I think being a single mom, I think you are proof that you, if you really are serious about this and it doesn't really get more serious than cancer, you will make the changes. And I'll tell you this, I don't talk about this much, but when I was diagnosed the second time, I lost everything. I got divorced, lost my house, lost everything, my job, everything. Oh, wow. So it is possible. There's resources, there's ways out there. You can do fundraisers, you can there's reach out to your, to your family. There's ways to do it. And even with um, just making diet, like, you know, your diet changes, was there anything big that you did? Uh, is, was it really expensive to do or was it hard to do? How did that, what did that look like for you? What's a little hard for most people, I think, is not eating as much meat okay. or wheat, you know, gluten, yes. sugar is a hard <laughs> one. That is your worst enemy, yes. I always say. Yeah. It is very acidic. So get rid of the acid to get rid of the acidic foods, that's when people have a hard time. Yes. But you get used to it. I used to love Mexican food, tacos, margaritas mm. and all yes. of that. And now I cannot live without my green juice. And I call my power green juice or smoothie. Can I tell you, can I share a little bit of the recipe? Yes, it's so good. We'll definitely yeah. have to post this. And, <laughs> and we, I have different recipes that I just play with, you know, yeah. that we created. But I do a base, so uh, a juice or water, or coconut water, and then I do a uh, super food, mm -hmm. so I like goji berries. Mm -hmm. Me too. Or chia. And then I do a lot of greens, handful of, I use cilantro because it gets the toxins out. Yes. Kale, spinach, and then I like berries, some type of berry, blackberry, or something like that. And even frozen berries, right? Is that okay? That's usually, I like to do that too because it's nice because it covers up the flavor of the greens. Exactly. And I, the way I know is um, Addison was six months old and she just started baby, I make her baby food and she just started on it. And wherever I drink my smoothies, she always wants to share with me and she was like, mm -hmm. and she wanted more oh, of it. I love that. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, but I mean, you can make it taste good and your kids will like it too. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and it, beyond the detox, what was your next step? So energize. No, I'm sorry. Detox, nourish. So nourish is the juice, what you eat. Supplements are very important. Minerals are very, very, very important. So we all have deficiencies of magnesium or potassium or calcium. We all have deficiencies. Yeah. Vitamin D3, a lot of women do. Uh, that's nourish, just nourish and, and alkaline foods. And I actually um, um, work, working on a video right now. It's on alkaline foods and just a way for you to test your, your urine to see if you are uh, acid or alkaline. And the reason why this is so important, this has just changed my mind. I was listening to one of the top experts in the world on cancer and research, and he said, disease cannot survive in an alkaline environment. So if you can figure out how to eat 80% alkaline foods, you can just, and she's going to talk about oxygen, oxygen uh, therapy in a minute, but you can just put, this right here is oxygen. This is so alkaline. If you flood your body with the alkaline, alkaline foods, then you're creating that environment. And then, well, like she said, the, the bad stuff, the stuff that we know <laughs> we shouldn't, it's very acidic. One of the most acidic things ever is sugar. And really, if you look at your diet, it's there. So just being conscious of that, and it's, it's good. I love my diet. I love making foods and it's colorful and I just want it. It's addicting. So just like you can get addicted to sugar, you can get addicted, addicted to sugar. Addicted to sugar. It's good for you. It's yeah. Good for you. So after, so we have detox and I love detox your life. Then we have nourish. 
And I think everyone understands that concept, and I think we try to make it so confusing. You know the things to eat, and if you don't, you can go on her website. I have lots of resources too. And then what was the last step that really was the icing on the cake for you? Energized, and I found this machine. People are skeptical because they don't know about it, but they use it in Germany as part of the protocol to heal disease and cancer. And I tried it in California, and a few things happened in my body. I'm like, this works, it's very powerful. So it's a pulse electromagnetic field therapy. And it's PMF, it's a machine that detoxes your body, sends oxygen to the cells, and it's for inflammation. Okay. Anybody can use it. And that accelerates the healing 10 times. Wow. So that's what made it, give it the push. So uh -huh. detox, then you nourish, and then you give it the push with the energize. And when did you start using that? December. Okay. And that's when you said you saw results with your skin. Crazy. Oh. Crazy. From December to March, I, I started crying. I didn't want to open them, and then I started crying because they shrank so much. I would say from there to about 40%. Okay. Because from the first few months, they say seven months, they only shrank a 20%. Okay. But then from November, December to March, it was just insane oh. with that protocol. That is so wonderful. So if somebody doesn't want to go to California or Germany, is there is this something they can access here in Austin or wherever you're, they're watching this? Is it something available? It's not, they don't have it in Texas, but I'll be the first one. I'm gonna bring it okay. May. At the end of the day, I'm gonna start doing, so they can contact me and they can get the therapy. Okay, done. so I'll post her information that way. Anyone interested can at least get started here locally. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you can do some research to find it online. Mm -hmm. And just to finish off, what would you say uh, for the moms listening that maybe have some health challenges for themselves or their kids, what's one piece of advice you'd like to share that kind of got you through all of this? Baby steps. Baby steps, start with one green juice. Uh, do the small changes. Don't, don't force yourself or push yourself, yourself too much because you won't stick to it. And think of your kids. Think of your kids. Think of the future. Think of how you feel. Do I want to feel like this? Do I want to feel tired? Do I want to feel achy? So just start with baby steps. Okay. But always, always, whatever you put in, take out. Detox is very important. And the different supplements, the different things. Yeah, that is very important. Because sometimes if you start doing this and you don't do the detox, your body might not respond the way that you want to. So it is important. Um, what What's one of your favorite books as far as you know detoxing and stuff like that? Oh my goodness. I like uh, Schneider, Kimberly Schneider. Oh, yes. Beauty Detox. And I like another book that's Kill Cancer, Not People. Anybody can read it. Anybody. Anybody. Can. Okay. So maybe check out those resources too. So, well, thank you so much, Pilar, for being here today. Thank you so much. And what is your website name one more time? Healthybeautybypilar.com. All right. Wonderful. And again, I'll post that for y'all. So for those watching this video, please post a comment. Share with us what was your favorite thing that she shared today or maybe a health tip you have something alternative or just what's a baby step that you're going to commit to starting right now it could be starting a green juice it could be taking a walk around the block with your kids what's one baby step you're willing to take today to get started on a healthier lifestyle thanks again and in, in, until our next video uh, make this the most healthy day ever and we'll see you next time thank you yes thank you